Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I am on a financial freedom journey with my family. I share all about that and more on this channel. Today we're going to be going over our July budget recap. I can't believe it's already August. I'm so excited for August. It's one of my favorite months. It's my oldest birthday and I just love like the end of summer and all of the fun things and getting ready for back to school. I don't know. Do you guys love back to school? I love school supplies. <laughs> I have always been like this since I was a kid and I just love like going back to school shopping and all of those fun things. So really excited for August, but first, before we jump fully into August, we need to close out July. So I do film these videos every single month. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, you've probably seen them, but I do think they're very important videos to film because I always film a monthly budget video, but there is the other side to that video, which is what we actually spent. And this month is a perfect example of how sometimes things don't go to plan, okay? <laughs> I could have planned better for this month, honestly. Um, but yeah, you'll see, I will explain as we go along. There was a few categories that we went well over budget. So we will talk about that as we go through this video. So starting with our income, we did budget $7,200 for our W-2 income. So this is just my husband and my like just regular income from our salaried jobs. This is very consistent. We're both salaried. And so this really does not change. Then we also have our side hustle income and this changes every single month. And we never budget for this because we never know exactly how much we're going to be bringing in this month. We were able to bring in $181 in extra income, which brings our total income to $7,381. So let's see what we did with that money this month. So our mortgage is the first thing that we pay. So that is $2,100. This is a little bit more than our mortgage actually is. It's about $19.95. So we do just pay a little bit extra. Our mortgage went down a few months ago. And so we were paying closer to $2,100. We were paying about $49 extra. And when it went down, we actually just decided to keep paying the 2100 that we were paying because we can just apply the rest to principal. So we're paying about like $104 extra every single month on the principal. So it's a really easy way for us to just pay, you know, a little bit extra on the mortgage every year and it doesn't really affect our budget or do anything like that. So it's just a really easy way for us to just make a little extra payment. So next we had our credit card fee. So this is something that I talked a little bit about in our budget video. So we do have a Southwest credit card and we use that for like just every day expenses. So we use that for like all of our groceries, gas, all of that kind of stuff. And we find it very, very worth the annual fee. So there is an annual fee of $99. I know that there are a lot of credit cards that don't have annual fees, but to me, this credit card is worth it. For us, we fly for free pretty much every time we fly because we accumulate so many points on Southwest. They also do give you a lump sum of points when you do pay the annual fee. So I think the annual fee, you when you pay it, you get, I think, 6,000 Southwest points, which is a pretty good sum of points, and it's definitely worth the $99 to us. So that's what we, we do for our credit cards. We also have another Chase credit card that does not have an annual fee. I believe it's the Freedom Flex card, and that is the card that we use for sinking fund expenses. So we do have two separate credit cards. One we use for like our day-to-day -day expenses that come out of our regular budget, and the other we use only for sinking fund expenses, and we pull the that out of our savings. That's just the way that it works for us best. Um, just to have like that separate credit card that we know is like coming from our savings from sinking funds so that they're not getting mixed together. So that's kind of a little bit of an explanation on how we use our credit cards. Um, we do use credit cards and we have for a while. There was a period of time where we stopped using them because we were in credit card debt before. Um, we did get out of credit card debt. We haven't been in credit card debt in a long time. And so we definitely have been disciplined with it now, but there was a time where we weren't and we took a break from using credit cards. So no shame if you do not want to use credit cards. I think that is totally valid and do what works for you. But we do like the benefits of using a credit card. So we also have our subscriptions. So this is just Netflix and Peloton. These are basically our only two subscriptions that we have right now. So we do pay $54 for both of those. 
Then we have our utilities. So for this month, this was just our electric and gas and our internet. So we do also pay water, but that is quarterly. So that is not reflected this month. So we had budgeted 310 and we actually spent 279. Our electric bill, I feel like was actually cheaper than I thought it was going to be, which is awesome. But then I just got our July bill yesterday and it was way more than I thought it was going to be. So I feel like they've kind of evened out like this month was way less than I thought it was going to be. And then the one that I just got for like this next month is more than I thought it was going to be. So I feel like they're kind of evening themselves out here. So that was a 3.8% of our income. The next category we have is preschool. So my daughter does a preschool program. She is doing that through the summer and then she is starting 4k in the fall. We only have part-time 4k. So we actually do still have an expense for her for the fall, but it's going to go down a little bit. So that's really nice. And that is at 10% of our income. Then we have giving. So we do have a reoccurring donation that we have every single month of a hundred dollars. And that is at 1.4% of our income. We have spending. So my husband and I both get a hundred dollars every single month to spend on whatever we want. Um, we don't track it. We don't like pay attention to what each other are buying with it. Like it's just our money to do what we want with. And it's really, really nice to have money that we don't have to track because I am like a hardcore tracker with finances. Obviously you guys have been on my channel. Like we talk about money all the time. And so it is nice for me to have money that I don't have to explain to anybody. I can do what I want with it. I don't have to report it anywhere. We just get the money in our personal checking accounts. And if we want, we can save it up or we can spend it, you know, do whatever we want with it. So that really works out well for us. We've been doing this for a really long time. When we became debt free, we did increase the amount. I think we used to do a hundred total. And so we kind of doubled that once we got out of debt, which has been nice. So gas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We budgeted 175. We spent $287 on gas. I know. Like what the heck? I don't know what, like this is like felt like such a huge jump and I don't feel like the gas prices have really gone up very much, but we do have two cars now. And so I feel like we're still kind of getting acclimated to like the cost of having an additional car. And also we both ended up filling up our cars like right before the month ended. And so I think this was kind of a fluke. I am not really sure. We're going to keep an eye on it and see if we need to raise it. I'm thinking we might need to go like 200, 250, but I'm going to see how this goes next month and then kind of make the decision then. I think this might have been a fluke. Also, July, we were like doing a lot of traveling and just had a lot going on. We had a lot of baseball and stuff like that. So I feel like this may have just been like a fluke month, but something definitely I want to keep an eye on. Um, groceries, we were actually under budget, but you'll have an explanation of why in a second. So we spent $7.23 on groceries, which is actually under budget by $77. And so that was at 9.8%. So we, if you guys have been following me for a while, if you've watched any of my recent videos, we actually had some home maintenance that we had to get done in July. We had to get our entire downstairs flooring redone and so we basically did not have a kitchen for like four days total. So we, we had to basically eat out for four days. I mean, we had like some things, you know, we had snacks and stuff and we were able to mostly like make breakfast work, but we had to basically live out of our upstairs and yeah. Now I know that I could have probably planned ahead better. I could have done other things to make this more affordable, like without eating out so much. But honestly, it was already a big enough hassle to have like our entire house ripped apart. And so I did not have the forethought or the planning to like plan ahead and be able to like prep meals and stuff that we could have eaten during this time. So not ideal, obviously, but I will talk about the dining out in a minute. So we did not eat as many groceries because we did eat out a significant amount more than we would have had we not have had that done. So yes, again, I'll talk more about that in a second when we get to the dining out. So for fun and kids, we had budgeted $100 and we actually spent $118. Now, 
I guess, I don't know. I don't really consider this like over budget very much. I mean, obviously like we budgeted a hundred, we spent a little bit more, but I feel like that's within like the range of what I would expect. So I'm happy with that one. And miscellaneous, we budgeted 200, we spent 216. So same thing, like we went a little bit over budget, but I am not too concerned about that. Oops, I put an extra one here. <laughs> That's what I get for talking and writing. So we are $18 over budget and $16 over budget. So definitely considering that a win, I think that's fine. Like obviously when we're buying things, like we're not gonna have exactly the like right amount of money. Like we're not gonna be able to spend exactly $200. So I am good with a little bit of overage. Now what I'm not as happy with is our dining out. <laughs> so again, I just talked about how we did not have a kitchen. So we budgeted 250. I should have thought about this before like we did our budget, but I honestly just didn't even really put two and two together because I wasn't thinking about it. So we actually spent $420 on dining out in July. This is probably one of the highest months we've ever had eating out. It's pretty bad, but it is what it is. We basically had to eat out for four days, so. It is what it is. Not ideal, could have planned better, didn't, it's fine. So $420 in dining out and I'm hoping we'll be better in August. So that's all we can do is just try to do better. So then we have our sinking funds. So these are our five sinking funds that we use. So we had originally budgeted $100 for each of these. Now, after we got our floors done and realized we were gonna be pretty over budget, I actually did like decrease just the car sinking fund. So if you guys have been on my channel for a while, we, in the beginning of the year, saved up $10,000 to buy my husband a car. Now we only spent about half of that. And so we really have like a big buffer in this. And so I really, I had initially planned on putting a hundred in there because we actually did have to pay well, I don't know if it's come out yet, but we, we have to pay our biannual uh, car insurance. And so I originally wanted to put a hundred in here just so that we're not using too much of the car sinking fund. I wanna make sure we have like a good amount in there in case, you know, one of our two cars needs like major work or anything. But the more I looked at it, I was like, okay, we don't need to be funding this that much. I think our, our biannual car insurance is like maybe $500. So I think it'll be okay without it. So. That was a decision that I kind of made on the fly and decided to just put a little bit less towards this because I knew that we had a good buffer in there and I knew that we were going to be over budget with dining out. And so I kind of wanted to help, help us not be like over budget in general. So that's what we did with that. And then for our Roth IRA, we were able to put $1,590 and we were actually able to finish my husband's Roth IRA this month of July. So I was really happy with that. We are now moving on to my Roth IRA. So I'm excited about that. So 20% of our income for this month actually went to my husband's Roth IRA. So that's really great. Um, we do put more money aside for retirement before this. So this is like our net income. So we obviously have more money that is going into our 401ks for our work. And we also have an HSA. So this is like post all of that. So we do save more than 20% of our income, which is amazing. I'm super proud of that. And so yeah, that is, I'm really happy with how this month went, even though we had a lot of like overages and just kind of weird things happening this month. I am overall pretty satisfied with how we ended up at this month. So let's go ahead and just do the quick recap down here. So our total income for this month was $7,381. Our total expenses were $7,396, which leaves us negative $15. Now I do round these numbers. Obviously these are all like perfect numbers. We have, you know, change and coins. So I do try to round them like up or down. So for income, I try to round down for expenses, I try to round up. And that just helps us kind of build up a buffer. So even though we are technically negative $15 on this spreadsheet, we are not actually negative $15. It probably evened out to a little bit in the positive. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. We just round up and down to 
basically make our checking account have like a little buffer. And we also do have a few hundred dollars in there at all times, just in case like an, a bill comes out or like things like that. So that is all I have for you guys for July. Let me know in the comments down below. How did your July go? Did you have anything unexpected come up in July? And what are you looking forward to in August? I would love to hear about it. And I will talk to you guys on Friday for Debt Free Friday. Bye guys.